Hello everybody, welcome back to the Wandering Loop channel. This is my travel channel, vlog channel, slash interesting things channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you found me from my other channels, welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at the very first Supercenter grocery store. Yes, it's located in Michigan, and it's not a Walmart. Even though this, the exact building's no longer here, this store has been here since 1962, which is the same year Walmart started, but Walmart started in 1962 as a small store where Meyer was already a super center. Now, Meyer opened in the 1930s as a small store in Greenville, Michigan, later moving their headquarters to the Grand Rapids, Michigan area. In Kentwood, Michigan, they opened what they called Thrifty Acres, which was the first super center, much like a modern day Target, modern day Walmart, but it's a Meyer. Meyer is still going strong. They are now over 250 stores and 200 gas stations in six different states and adding more locations, both large and small. They, um, back in about, I think it was 2015, don't quote me on the exact date, sadly knocked down the original building and rebuilt a new one here. The original building had been added on and expanded and they did a lot to try to make it a more modern, better store, but the demand for that location was outpacing its size. Compared to Supercenters today, that Supercenter was quite small and it was very awkward, very weirdly laid out. I wish I had walked through it with a video. I'd shopped there many times. But we're gonna be walking through this one, give you a quick tour, talk about the history. They did upgrade this building. It was actually interesting. The city did not want them to do it. Um, I believe this falls within the Kentwood, Michigan area, out just outside of Grand Rapids, Michigan on 28th Street and Kalamazoo in the corner. and Meyer wanted to rebuild this, knock it down, do a brand new store. The city corner rumors I've heard fought it. And it wasn't until Meyer threatened just to shut it down and sell the land, sell the building, that the city finally allowed them to build a new building. They built this one directly behind it as the existing one maintained open. And then they knocked down the old one. But there still is a piece of the old one left. And we'll show you a little bit of that. And then we'll walk into the new store and check it out. But Meyer is well loved. Here in Michigan, as with all things, there's people who love it, there's people who hate it. But let me know what you think. And how is it compared to Walmart? There's many stores out there. But let's go take a look at the historic marker. Let's go take a look at Meyer and check out the store. Before I walk over there and show you the plaques, these are the last remaining part of the original store, at least here at this location, to my knowledge. These are arches from the original building. When this was put up, they were still stained beautiful. They were beautiful stained quickly become weather-worn, so I hope they reseal these, restain them. It'd be pretty cool. But let, this is actually on the Mis Michigan Historic um, site now. It's an officially recognized historical location. Let's go take a look at that marker real quick. So real quick before we go in, I jump back in the car because it's really windy out there. It was hard to hear. But some interesting things from the historical sign that jumped out at me. For one, each one of those beams is over 2,000 pounds. Huge, heavy beams. But when this building was built originally, it was 20,000 square feet. Way bigger than any other grocery store in the United States at the time. The idea was bring in, you know, your standard superstore groceries and household goods and everything into one location but they did a few interesting things they actually even though there was one row of checkouts where you'd get your food and your general merchandise they subleased it so that other companies would actually run different departments inside the building that model did not work and they ended up replacing them even though it put financial burden on them that Meyer took over and did everything in-house which was pretty cool but Meyer was very unsure if this business model would work. They had a grocery store next to his barber shop that was successful, but would a 20,000 square foot super center all in one thrifty acres be successful? 
So they poured the building with five inch thick concrete floors with the idea that if this failed, they would just turn it into a dealership to sell automobiles and they could park automobiles inside in Michigan in cold winter. An indoor auto dealership may have been very successful for them, but that was the backup plan. Thankfully, that never was needed. And Meyer actually started rolling out in Holland and, and other cities around the Western Michigan area more store locations like this and it ended up being very successful for them but not immediately it was a struggle at first as with all new things people had to get used to the idea and people often don't like new things right off the bat and over time though as you can see the super center is becoming the store that people go to even to today it is what people shop at with walmart target meyer and so many other stores out there adopting the super center idea of 20,000 square foot plus stores. Now 20,000 square feet seems small, but but for back then. So interesting that they weren't sure this was going to work and they had a backup plan from day one in what to do if it failed, turn it into a car dealership. So with that said, let's run inside and shoot some video and show you what the inside of a modern Meyer looks like. there you go. There was our tour of the very first Supercenter grocery store in the United States and the world. Well, the building that replaced it. Now, two things. First of all, there was a small display, kind of disappointingly small, about the original building in there. All it really had was a small picture of the building, and it said that this building, this new one, was built in 2010. Now, think about that seems right. The 2015, according to the website, Meyer.com, their history website, just as it became a historic landmark in 2015 with that plaque I showed you earlier and all that. But the original building was knocked down in 2010 for this one here. So it's been about 12 years now since that building went down. Very long life. Uh, also, Meyer's known for one other thing for kids is they have what they now call Sandy. It's a little electronic horse ride. You can get on it and sit and move it but it only costs a penny and they've always only been a penny. And there was a lot of talk when they came out with new ones a few years ago that they were keeping it at a penny, not to make money, but to uh, just keep it accessible for everybody. It's actually a thing, a lot of people leave pennies. There's always pennies laying around them for any kid who wants to go on a ride for Sandy, to hop on there and be able to ride them. Let's see if I can put a picture here. There was a long line of kids there I didn't want to film a bunch of kids riding it, so I couldn't film it in there. But I remember as a kid riding those horses. There's new ones now. My daughter loved riding them. I bet my son will too when he gets a little bit older. But Meyer in the 70s and even to the 80s even, I think, had little play areas in the center of Meyer where your parents could drop their kids off, kids could play in there, and parents could go grocery shopping, come back and pick up their kids. Now these were not supervised areas. I'm not even sure all Meyers had this. But in the 70s and early 80s, you can find these pictures online. Meyer had unsupervised play areas where parents could go shopping without their kids. And their kids could just run wild inside of Meyer back in the day. Things are a little different in 2020. I can't imagine just letting my, you know, dropping my kids off in a playground in the middle of a grocery store and saying, I'll come back to you when I'm done grocery shopping. But back then, that was the norm.
So if you like these kind of videos, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. It really does help us because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. So hopefully they recommend this video to more people. We would really appreciate it. So until next time, thanks for your support. I really appreciate it. I'll be back with another adventure before you know it.